It's the Weekly Wrap with your host, broadcasting legend Bruce Wolf, and his trusty sidekick, comedian Tim Slagle. And now, without further ado, Bruce Wolf. Bruce Wolf, Tim Slagle, and the Weekly Wrap. And Tim, we need some background music. Dun, 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 dun. This is an election <laughs> special. Bruce Wolf and Tim Slagle. Oh my I'll gosh, we're there. almost relevant today. Are we Huntley and Brinkley, or I'd rather be Ferranti and Teicher, dueling pianos. <laughs> Skipper and Gilligan works for me. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> how about um, how about Stiller and Mira? I'll be Mira. I, I can I can do that. I could do that. Anyway, um, lots of the, in our next segment, we're going to be talking to Darren Bailey, the next governor of the state of Illinois. We also have an interview scheduled with uh, Dan Brady, who's running for Secretary of State. Quick, what what does the Secretary of State do? I don't know. I don't know. They issue uh, puts licenses. His, put, yeah, puts his name on the license plate renewal form. That's... Yes. So, and then some of them wind up making license plates in uh, prison, <laughs> like George Ryan did. <laughs> Old joke, but they're good ones. Oh, yeah. So um, so did you see? Oh, I, I almost feel sorry for the Democrats. The progressive wing of the Democratic Party sent a letter to Biden a few days ago saying that they want that. And they apparently had prepared it in July that they wanted to. Uh, him to uh, urge a diplomatic solution to Ukraine. <laughs> and it's like the White House, even Biden recognized that this was a mistake because <laughs> they're putting pressure on him. They're sounding like, um, you know, the isolationist Republicans now. Of course, then they withdrew that and they said, oh, it was prepared in July and it, we really didn't intend to send it, but they did intend to send it and they screwed up. And um, oh, oh, my goodness. And nice little uh, unforced error there by uh the by the progressive wing of the I, imagine, I imagine it could be possible that hunter uh uh sent that ah okay you know it's a <laughs> please we need a solution <laughs> i haven't got my board seat check for months. i see you know what that's probably the most rational explanation i can think of meanwhile i i want to i know we usually play games in our, our bonus segments here but i what do you think was the better biden gaffe um it was uh was it that, that, that he said that the student loan bailout pass, was passed by Congress, which it wasn't? By or one or two votes. One oh. or two votes. It was, <laughs> it was close. close. It was not yeah. only did he not only did he remember something that never happened, he even knew the knew the spread. Hey, look, as his daddy said in Scranton, Pennsylvania in the 1950s, uh, when he saw a, a gay couple on the corner, love is love. Uh, OK, so th that happened, too. Um, so was it that or was it John Fet that he said that John Fetterman's wife will be a great lady in the Senate, <laughs> which actually there's probably more truth to that one, because certainly Fetterman's wife is going to be, uh, you know, the. Uh, the uh, puppeteer on that one, uh, I believe so, it's I believe it's Fetter woman. Exactly. Well, that's how he introduced himself, of woman. course, at, at a rally recently. And that may have been the high point of, of his campaign. And speaking, of course, of Fetterman, did you actually see the debate at all? I I, I watch I watch clips. I didn't see the whole thing. What I noticed, what I noticed, because, you know, because, you know, I've been talking for the past few weeks about that conjoined twin uh, coming out of his neck. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Is that, uh, and they, they were very nice that they uh, photographed Fetterman from the from the right. Oh, okay. So you couldn't. Oz was straight on, but Fetterman, it was the camera was always to the oh, no. right. So you couldn't no. see uh, Barney or whatever that. If was. only uh, they had been so kind to Richard Nixon during the debates with uh, JFK in 1960. <laughs> Let's get him to look as sweaty as possible. Don't let him put makeup on. Um, <laughs> so here's the thing. Uh, I understand. I, I'm glad I didn't see it because I, I don't even believe in looking at car accidents when I'm driving by. I, you know, first of all, I'm wasting people's time with the gapers block, the people behind me. And uh, I and I just I just feel it's wrong because I'd never watched the first round of American Idol because they put people on there that had no business being anywhere near. Uh, and I don't like laughing at people that I I, I like laugh, uh, punching up. And um, anyway. I believe somebody said that he started the debate by saying good night, everyone. I yeah, mean, that should have been night. good night. <laughs> it, it should have been good night right then and there. I, and um, then the, the defenses of coming for him. There's this guy who was the co-writer with Adam McKay of Don't Look Up. I forgot his name. It's like Sirota or, or something like that. 
It's a pretty funny guy. Remember our little shtick that we did and saying, hey, it doesn't matter who's elected. They're just fungible turkeys anyway, and they're just doing our business. They're avatars. We don't really need actual human beings to be in office. Well, that was a, a bit that we did like a week or two ago. This guy wrote it in seriously. He did, said, <laughs> we don't. Everybody makes it out that you need senators to debate and all this. This isn't Mr. Smith going to Washington. Nobody needs to be able to talk in order. To, I, I, I want to hold them to that. Um, uh, you know, I, I, re I really want to hold them to it. But you know that if the shoe were on the fo other foot, uh, you know, they would be saying that the guy is. Oh, my God, they'd be merciless. Yeah, it would be merciless. But, but it's, I mean, uh, you know, it's it, 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 it's it's almost like we're electing ventriloquist dummies at this point. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, well, I mean, I mean, Biden, I mean, he actually makes Biden look good in some way. But, you know, I go back to when they lampooned Dan Quayle for misspelling the word potato. OK, which when I it was you... written down that way, when it was written, that, that, that people <laughs> right. forget. No, exactly. whoever handed it to him, wrote it that way. He yeah. was just no. reading off the he asked... trusted the cue card more than his own right. good sense. Those are the sta that's the standard that we had in, in uh, 1988. Uh, but and I mean. And, and, and all the stuff of making fun of Trump, all his gaffes and Kovef. And like it's the worst thing in the world, and he's he's a dummy. And now this guy comes out and says, basically, you know, we could elect a Roomba to be uh, <laughs> to be uh, the, the next senator. Uh, I, I, look, I'm willing. To, I'm willing to say, okay, it's fine. It doesn't really matter. They're just stand-ins uh, for for what we believe with, and we should have a direct democracy. Uh, it, 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 we already, uh, you know, I uh, have. Uh, have democratized the media so that everybody's got his own podcast to witness this. Uh, so, um, yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm old fashioned. I think we should get rid of the 17th amendment and I hope I'm saying the right one. Uh, cause right. I, I think it was better when the legislate state legislatures appointed senators. It, it, populism sure. is, is not good. No, populism. I, I agree with you totally. And, uh, also would question letting women have the vote as well. Uh, it's just a, Anyway, no, no reaction to Tim on that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was sitting there counting. Did I did, did I say the wrong one? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, right, right. I thought I'd get a laugh because then. Oh, no, I panicked. You, I weren't, panicked. you I, weren't taking me seriously. I'm going to get canceled if I actually said that women shouldn't vote. Right, exactly. So leave, me, leave me hanging out on a limb there. It's fine. Um, Chris, our producer, said that, uh, and I, I thought of this myself, Chris. I swear I had uh, before, but I didn't say it, uh, how they vivisected Mark Kirk when he was running uh, for reelection in the Senate from Illinois because he had suffered a stroke and that he wasn't qualified. So, uh, yeah, not that I was the greatest Mark Kirk fan, but he was a Republican. I, he, was he the last Republican senator from Illinois? I think so. Could have been. Uh, you know, I, uh, yeah, been. That's right. almost, almost had one, almost had one uh, before uh, Barack Obama. The, oh, well, uh, Jack Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but, but, you know, he made the you talk about defining deviancy down. The guy was knocked out of the race because he had sex with his own wife at a club. <laughs> well, no, he wanted to. And 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 my my opinion is I yeah. do not blame him for that, because if I was going to have sex with yeah. Jerry Ryan, yeah. I want witnesses, too. <laughs> exactly. Because none of yeah. my friends would no, ever believe this it. knocked him out of the race. <laughs> oh, he this guy had a chance of winning. Now, because so the latest thing is that, and I, I have heard this term used before, but it really uh, uh, made made its uh, foray and uh, entre entree into uh, uh, regular parlance uh, with what happened here. The term ableism. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. This was this is ableist to con to uh, sure. condemn a Fetterman, even though it really isn't because. Ableism is when you say that a guy who is losing a limb has lost a limb isn't qualified to um, yeah okay. to be a senator. Okay. He's yeah. not qualified to run a race, uh, you know, uh, a relay race. But but yeah, uh, this is an ableism. This is an exact qualification. Okay, um, okay. You know, let's uh, let's nominate Chris Burke, shall we? Yeah. No. I, look, I I I'm not an ableist so much as I'm a canist. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I'd like to defend fratricide. <laughs> I think it's really gotten a bad rap uh, over, over, uh, low these meta generations. So yeah, I, it was just, um, just an awful thing. And, uh, you know, people are trying, I, I saw it on my Twitter feed. It was like, 
every other Twitter comment was about this. And even the Democrats were rolling their eyes up in their head uh, saying, oh, oh, my goodness, how could they trot him out? And uh, well, and I think this I think the strategy was that they believe that by now that all the Democrats would have already voted. Sure. By mail or sure. by ballot box, they didn't. Uh, they, they 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 underestimated the amount of independence in the race. I think. Yeah, maybe. I, or I the don't... people that were waiting to mail to send those ballots in. Right. So I mean, it's it's possible that this will tighten up or that uh, Oz will even win. But uh, I mean, I was just. Uh, I was. Are there <laughs> polls? Are there any polls? I haven't well, seen since any then. Polls. I haven't seen a poll since then. So, you know, they're so, you know, yeah, no. you know, those polls are. Bleak. I know. I know. <laughs> this, I mean, it's um, I mean, it's a shame in Pennsylvania because this guy Mastriano could drag Oz down um, because, I mean, he is I, we're going to talk to Bailey and Bailey kind of gives the appearance of being very Trumpian, but he's really tamped it down. I mean, you're going to see that uh, uh, he's he's not you know, a full throated uh, Trump supporter and um, like Stormy Daniels uh, oh. <laughs> or Carrie Lake uh, for that matter. But I guess she can get away with it. Um, but um, but Mastriano is uh, I mean, he's been tied in with uh, anti-Semitic websites and everything. And he, he, yeah, to his credit, he hasn't he hasn't backed down, but it's it, it, there's no way he's going to win. And that that could actually uh, could bring down Oz in this race, but, race, but uh, boy, I've talked more about Pennsylvania than I really care to. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, no, I'm not that into Pennsylvania, but we, <laughs> we've got an interview coming up next segment. I swear he's he's coming on our show because it's an exclusive interview. Uh, no tough questions coming up with uh, Darren Bailey, the next governor of the state of Illinois. Are you looking forward to that, Tim? Right. Oh, I thought we were going to have the, the 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 Pennsylvania candidate on. Oh, well, we may as well. <laughs> I've really veered off in an awful direction. Bruce Wolf and Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap. Republican gubernatorial candidate Darren Bailey. Mr. Bailey, thank you so much for coming on. The people of Illinois, I know, I know a lot of people there, especially in Chicago. The crime is beating them down. What do you tell them? What's the deal? What's oh, we've got to. Well, first and foremost, I tell them that uh, help is on the way. So uh, hang in there. You know, we've got the three musketeers of crime and chaos and dysfunction with with Governor Pritzker and Mayor Lightfoot and, and the state's attorney, Kim Fox. And 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 Chicago is living under a no cash bail. Mm -hmm. uh, she refuses to prosecute anyone. And the, the, the real problem with this is this Safety Act, a bill that was passed and Governor Pritzker signed. And, and it will go into effect for all of Illinois on January. First, Bruce Wolf, Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap, and uh, you know, there's, bit, there's our candidate. I'm a little bit nervous, uh, <laughs> because you know it's been a while since I've done an interview with a major politician. I've interviewed, I mean, I interviewed Mitt Romney before he lost. Uh, who else have I interviewed before, before they lost? Uh, you know, talk to talk to just about all of them. Uh, but you know, I'm, I'm a little bit out of shape here. So, you know, I want to get my feet wet interviewing a guy who was 15 points down a couple of weeks ago, but Darren Bailey is uh, at the latest poll, only nine points down. So, uh, you know, uh, I actually got into a little squabble with a guy who writes for national review. He said, we got to start picking some better candidates. He's a Republican from Chicago. And, uh, he said, because there's one uh, poll that has Bailey down as much as 22 points. And I shot back. Hey, he's only down nine now. <laughs> and uh, like I said, OK, if he wins, you know, I'll, I'll uh, issue an apology in National Review. But, yeah, we are going to be interviewing uh, Darren Bailey. Uh, in I think he's going to win. I think he's got it. I think I, I think a lot of Democrats are, are, aren't going to show up uh, in a couple of weeks. Well, you know, it's interesting that uh, the uh, because he's down only nine in part. Because uh, the, the Democrats aren't showing up in early voting. I mean, they're really down. I think Pritzker scared the heck out of them uh, with the pandemic <laughs> stuff. They, they're they still afraid to go outside of uh, <laughs> of their houses for the early voting. All right. So here we go. Sam. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the next governor of the state of Illinois, Darren Bailey. Happy days are here again. The skies above are clear again. Thank you, Mr. Bailey, uh, for joining us. We appreciate it. We promise this is going to be a holds barred interview, not a no holds barred. It's a holds barred because uh, I, I'm voting for you. 
I don't know if Tim's voting for Tim. I don't. I hate to put you on that spot. Are you voting for Mr. Bailey? Are you uh, for sure. I don't. I don't live in Illinois, but I. Oh, oh okay. I yeah. don't think that matters anymore, does it? It looked like <laughs> Illinois behind you right now. I thought that was downstate, but you know yeah, what do I know? I okay, it was down in our area. It, yeah. Okay, Mr. Bailey. Here's my question. Uh, latest poll, WGN Emerson poll. They had you down 15 just a couple of weeks ago. Now you're down nine. I mean, if there were a Trafalgar poll, which there, I guess there isn't. And by the time uh, Pritzker lets all the criminals out on January 1st, I think you'd have a shot at winning this. What's your view? My view is we are winning. If you take back about to four months ago to the uh, primary days, you'll see the exact same trend. I mean, the day of primary, we were being told polls were showing that I might even come in third place. And we took a six way race uh, by 60 percent almost. So I'm out and about every day. I was on the uh, a red line at Belmont to Monday and at Fullerton this morning at six o'clock. And, 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 and I'm telling you what people are fed up. And if, if you know, those areas, those are the hot spots. Those are the areas where, you know, the Tommy Hansen, the Congressman that took me there, he said to there, and I don't know what to expect because it's pretty hostile here. And I am telling you what people are ready for change. Next time. Uh, you know, if you ever go to the L stops again, just go, Belmont, change for the Ravenswood. They'll think you're a Chicagoan. Oh, yeah. At least from Chicagoans circa 1973. All right, you were Tim. on the red line? Were you packing? <laughs> exactly. oh, I'm my. telling you, it's awesome. I'm not, I'm just, I'm fearless. I'm not afraid of anything. People are good. You got to fall in love with the people. Uh, t- every time of night, we're out there with people and they see our vehicle. All, they're, 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 they're coming up and they're showing, they're, they're frustrated. They're scared. They're concerned about their futures and as they should be. People are ready for change. It's pretty amazing. And and uh, they're always amazed because they make comments that we've never seen a candidate, a governor, anybody out here. So people know. I've seen a lot of comments on the red line that I've never seen All before. Right. Tim, Tim, here's the thing. <laughs> you know, I don't know if you even have standing to ask a question for since you're out of state. But since Dan Prompt is running a super PAC and he's a Florida resident, <laughs> outside uh, agitator, he's my former uh, radio partner, uh, future governor bailey um go ahead and ask a question to mr bailey no oh, um yeah uh if elected do you plan to move to springfield i can't remember the last time a governor actually lived in the governor's mansion no you're exactly right so uh, no that will be our residence and all of illinois will be welcome at springfield my wife is an amazing host we look forward to to reviving and bringing life back to springfield there is no doubt about that springfield right. Yeah, right. I'm going to interrupt the governor's answer, the future governor's answer right now. I mean, yada, yada, yada. We don't have that much time with you. Uh, all right. Here's so, you know, again, uh, referring back to, to Dan Proft and, and that pack and all their commercials. And I, I, it's hard for me to tell which is yours and which is uh, the, the PAC's commercials. And I think they've done a great job, you know, emphasizing crime. And I'm surprised you even went to the Belmont L stop, given some of the commercials I've seen. <laughs> but and there's no there's no question that that's a big issue. But Pritzker's pandemic measures kept kids out of school for so long. We just had the report today. I'm sure, you know, they're going to try and spin it and saying, no, no, everything, everything is uh, great. But Youngkin won in Virginia, uh, beat McAuliffe because parents were outraged. Uh, you, uh, I think that Whitmer and uh, the Minnesota guy are, are flat out lying to the voters about how many days the kids miss school. Do Are you going to emphasize in, through your ads or your campaigning or whatever, just uh, how much damage students uh, took in, you know, over the last couple of years? Well, parents know that. Uh, they are aware of that. They're living with that. They, they watched two years disappear, and uh, they're very frustrated about that. But right now, I want to tell you is what people are leaving this state because of, a, of crime and high taxes, and, and businesses are not coming into this state because of crime. Everyone is fearful of that. So, yeah, we've got there's so much uh, safety, uh, high taxes failed education, and the fact that this governor continues to uh, uh, roll out these executive orders and mandates. I mean, it's really, it's, it's tyrannous is what it is, and I'm calling it out for that, but I'm telling you what, people are aware of that. You remember I sued him in July in, in 2020 and won that lawsuit. The only person in the state to stand up and to push back uh, against him, so parents remember that. All right. The, the governor gonna... rolls a lot. <laughs> All right. I, I got a trick question for you. Uh, let's see if you can handle this one. OK, so you got to eliminate the Safety Act uh, because it allows criminals on the street who victimize the innocent. 
what if we eliminated the, I can't believe I'm saying this, the AR-15 because it gets into the hands of deranged teens who kill school children. I mean, you know, does that, does anybody really need an AR-15 when the, a 22 in the house? Well, what if we obeyed and followed the actual laws that we have in place? The Firearm Restraining Safety Act, which Governor Pritzker passed, should prevent all of that. The Highland Park shooting should never have happened. What, 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 how, would, how would the Highland Park shooting not have happened? Because all the things were in place. That young man, every step of the way, if the law was followed, if the law, if people knew about the law, uh, family, community, church, okay. school, law enforcement. You know, that, that, that's the problem. You know, if I had some uh, ham, I'd have a sandwich if I had some bread. You know, I mean, that's the problem with these things. And, you know, I, I, we could blame the mental health system, everything like that. And I realize it's even a Band-Aid solution. And, I, you know, and Lord knows, I mean, you know, there's 20 million AR-15 owners in the United States. And but there's about eight kids a year who wreak havoc. And of course, there's all kinds of problems as a result of that. When I was going to school and I'm older than you, Governor. Future governor. Out of their hands uh, no, when I was we we didn't have even the school doors locked. And now there are so many safety measures. People live in terror. The July 4th is never going to be to the same to the people of Highland Park and in the area. I mean, there are consequences to this. And, you know. Couldn't we in any way curb uh, the sale or, uh, or or make sure that the AR-15s don't get into the hands of teenagers and 20-year-olds? Well, what we can do is make sure that we prioritize our mental health spending. So, eh, eh. Not good. I'm sorry. Not a good answer. We could also close, Bruce, <laughs> we could also problem. close the Indiana border. That, that might sure. <laughs> well, the Firearm Restraining Act would prevent that if that was obeyed. If people knew where to go to get help, Every one of these people, you've seen the backstory. Every one of them, you scratch your head. And you want I, I understand. But like I say, you know, I, I agree with you. I mean, you're preaching to the choir on that. All right. Let me ask you this. Do you believe the 2020 election was stolen? I believe the constitutional process was followed. And uh, here's the deal. Here's what here's the deal. OK, people have lost faith in the election. System. OK, it's true. And we are doing every at the end of the day, at the end of this election, I'm going to feel confident that I did everything possible uh, to, to make sure that uh, the integrity was followed because we're, we're training poll watchers and election judges and putting them out there. Okay. Nobody showed up to help out in 2020 or if they did, they weren't properly equipped to, to, to mark. Right. The system. So, it doesn't sound too Trumpian to me. I'm going to take I, I, look, I, I, I'm Jews for Bailey, you know, here. You know, so so no problem <laughs> with me. All right. Here's the abortion question. I mean, they're all. They, they don't want to run on the economy. They can't because of inflation. So they're running. on. I mean, Tammy Duckworth is running on her heroism as a, a uh, in the war and on abortion. Uh, that's what they're trying to run on. And they saw a little bump, you know, after the Dobbs decision. But OK, so your position, as I understand it, is uh, no exceptions, except if it helps the uh, save the life of the mother. Is that right? I mean, that's your personal view, right? Mm -hmm proudly pro-life and that okay. is my personal view yeah. okay and but you're saying well the legislature isn't going to change anything anyway so you're kind of relying on the legislature not to what that is true but I, here's another thing that i've had a lot of conversation with you know banning abortion i don't think that's the answer i think making abortion unnecessary is the answer and that yeah yeah oh, so so that's really in the same line as these shootings that you're talking about Let's get help to the people that need it. Every time there's a the problem, we throw more money and no one has any idea where to get the help. Let's enlist the, the religious, the civic groups that are out working, having amazing programs, and let's make sure that women have the true choices that, that they oh, should I, have. I, I thought you said when it was unnecessary, I thought you were going to recommend that women keep their knees together. Uh, but uh, OK, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> at least teenagers. All right. Well, hey, we appreciate your joining us. Um, you know, I'm not really doing much these days. So when you get elected, you know, if you need somebody to alienate, there's going to be a lot of the openings. Constituents. Yeah, there's I, I, I appreciate it. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bailey. And we wish you uh, the best as the campaign winds down. Thank you again. All right. Thank you. A Minnesota bail fund supported by Vice President Kamala Harris during her 2020 campaign helped set an accused domestic abuser free. Now, just weeks after his release, he's back behind bars after prosecutors charged him with murder. Bruce Wolf, Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap. So, yeah, Tim, Kamala caught in a lie there. I don't yeah. I don't think it's at least she didn't deny the election. 
There you go. There, some lives are worse than others. Yeah, I mean, so it's, at a, least so it's like, a bailed out Black Lives Matter protester who and, murdered someone. What's so, the big deal? You know, at least she's not as bad as like Whitmer, the governor of Michigan, or this uh, governor of Minnesota who are uh, trying to make it sound like uh, the kids didn't miss any school uh, because they realize. <laughs> I, I also love that we've got this um, Bill Foster. I see his ads running uh, for Congress. And what do you think a Democrat is running on right now? Making neighborhoods safe. Oh, yeah, that's what they're all about. They, they, they're jumping on the safety bag, the real safe bandwagon, not the safety. Well, act. Yeah, it's, you know, the less people in Illinois, the safer you're going to be. I right? guess so, as long as there's <laughs> space between us. The uh, So anyway, Kamala, what, what happened was is she actually supported this bail fund for uh, the George Fly, Floyd uh, rioters. And. Uh, and uh, then she tried to deny it, that she had supported this, but she had. So, uh, you know, I don't, don't, don't people yeah. realize they can be impeached? I mean, from, from the legal uh, standpoint, that we can find a prior inconsistent statement about them. Uh, it, it's it's it, in the old days, it was Tim Russert. He was the only one who did research and you know, he'd had people look at microfiche in the libraries and things like that. But now every statement that anybody's ever made is on record. And you, you can't just say, oh, no, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. Uh, yeah, like yeah. the Martin Short character, this what is it, Nathan, somebody or other with a cigarette? <laughs> what, what are you talking about? I, I didn't. No, you did. <laughs> supported the, the bail fund, uh, and, and and she lied about uh, supporting it. So, um, speaking of of the election, uh, the um, I Craig Wall did uh, interviewed uh, both uh, Pritzker and uh, and Bailey. And he asked Pritzker uh, about his extreme views on abortion. And he said, if your daughter at age 13 had become pregnant, would you not have wanted to be notified of it so you could process it with her and work through this with her? And Pritzker says, sure, but my daughter's going to come talk to me if that happens. And most daughters will. It's those under threat by family. Victims of incest are a perfect example of that. All right. So, Governor, how about this, Governor? How about we make an exception that if the girl has a victim of incest she doesn't have to tell the father who raped her okay but but we do need <laughs> rental notification don't we governor i mean if if we gave you that exception uh, well, yeah, i don't know i don't know come on i mean that is that's an absurd uh, uh, and uh, i think parents, it's i think it's wrong i think it's wrong i, I mean every parent who uh, whose kid does something wrong said well i thought you know i thought we were t- communicating well i <laughs> I think I thought he would have come to me before he shot up the school. Uh, right. But it's it's so dem- and it's part of the the Democrat psyche. They want to interpose the state uh, themselves between uh, family members. And, uh, you know, it's all like that. it's like that back in the Obama days. Remember, they had that uh, the, the life of Julia how she's supported by the state her entire life. Uh, and the, the family is supposed to be a bulwark against the state. And parents want to be involved in their children's lives. They want to know about this. Yeah, in the extreme example, you need DCFS there. Yeah, you don't notify the father who is a rapist. Right, we get that, Governor. But how about most people? You're talking about most people would want to be notified because sometimes, you know, kids go wayward and they don't want uh, they like they'd like to be notified of this. Uh, and, you know, also, he, you know, he, he also that himself kid, to do it. That kid who's been dropping by in his Trans Am, of course, they want <laughs> tell me about it. They want him to they want people to, to tell to, me about to, it. To I can't believe that. it. Anyway, I. Uh, an, another question that was coming up, I think Pritzker, I don't know if he's decided whether he's going to order children to uh, in order to go to school to get the covid booster shot, which it's an absurdity. Uh, but just between you and me, you know, the oldsters like us, and I realize I'm you know far older than you are. Um, are, are you have you or are you going to get the fifth covid shot? Are you going to get it at this point? I think that the vaccine is more dangerous than COVID. Oh, really? Yeah, that's okay. what I, that's what I figure. See, I'm I, I've had, I've had COVID and I was down for like two days. The problem is, is that, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to get the COVID shot. Uh, yeah, are you gonna get the flu shot? Oh yeah. The flu shot, flu shot. I'm okay. With. Okay. So the, 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 the last COVID shot, I was out for a week. And oh, really? COVID, yeah, COVID only knocked me down for two days. So yeah, it's, I'm, I'm and it's del- better. It's better to get COVID. I'm actually trying to get COVID. <laughs> See, I'm trying to delay. See, I want to <laughs> squeeze out like a couple of more weekends of golf 
And if it wrecks me, you know, my arm or makes me, uh, you know, it gets me sick. I, I don't want to lose the, the golf. So, you know, that's how I make my you know major health decisions. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's something that, you know, we, we should all be allowed to decide for ourselves and, and decide for our children as well. So it, it'll, it'll be interesting to see, uh, uh, uh where uh, I don't think kids, I don't think kids should get the shot. That. I think, yeah. I think kids, I think kids should, should more than more than old people, oldsters like me should be getting infected with COVID to, to increase their immunity. Yeah. Do what kids do. Hang out together, party. <laughs> absolutely make, make out in the basement i don't i don't know what else, oh, what else do kids do today one one other thing that pritzker did um he said uh and he told this to craig well and he said this elsewhere and it's the it's a, a democrat canard you know he he was asking oh yeah you want a nationwide ban in the air 15 you can't even get one in illinois uh which is about the bluest state around and he blamed the nra lobby and the problem is the NRA spends about, you know, uh, uh, not not a scintilla of what the teachers union spends. The The reason that uh, the gun lobby is powerful is that there are a lot of gun owners. That's the reason <laughs> there I mean, it's 20 million AR-15s out there. Right. So don't blame don't blame the lobby. Blame blame the people. OK, I mean, that's what you got to do. All right. Right now, we are pleased to uh, be joined by the next secretary of state of the state of illinois oh dan my gosh brady oh and welcome to dan brady we appreciate you being on our uh, podcast today thank you thank you very much for having me now uh is it bruce and yeah bruce yeah and no it's dan. whatever you want it to be uh just get my name right when you know my i fill out my new license uh when you become the secretary of state <laughs> yeah and, and, tim, and, and tim slagle as well I he's can. not a resident of the state so That's okay he, he needs a fake license. I can still vote for you, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I won't say anything. And Bruce, I understand you know a cousin of mine. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, uh, oh, oh, this is a shock to me. Who's your cousin? Pat Brady. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize Pat's your cousin. Oh, First yeah. cousins. Our dads are brothers. Full disclosure. Well, I was going to say it's all you Brady's because I was doing a little research on you and you actually beat a Brady who's the brother of a Brady when you were <laughs> running for Congress, was it? Is that? Uh, State House, yes. State so House. Just to let you know, in our graduating class in high school, there's Bill Brady, Dan Brady, Tim Brady, and Pat Brady. Yeah. Okay. So Brady Bunch, basically. Yeah. Right. Don't, don't step on my junk stand. Anyway, uh, <laughs> no. So, yeah, oh, Pat's a great guy. Wonderful guy. And send my regards to him. I haven't talked to I him. I will do that. In a while. So, um, so what kind of uh, advice does Pat Brady give you <laughs> in, in, uh, in running this campaign? Well, um, he, he gives all kinds of advice. It's what you listen to or don't listen to. And, uh, and that kind of goes for really, uh, lots of people that you talk to and meet along the trail, but obviously he gives good, good advice and is, uh, well-intended, um, as many people all that have been helpful. Um, and then you have to, you know, you have to make that decision of who you, uh, thinks right, who's giving you the best advice and what your gut tells you. Okay. I was just looking for a five second cutesy answer. I never listened to Pat, but that's fine. That's okay. <laughs> so um, uh, I, I was actually looking yeah. up to see if there were any issues because quite frankly, I don't know exactly. I mean, you know, the obvious thing that, which I'm sure you've gotten a million times is do you have your own tumbling team? Because that seems to be a prerequisite, but uh, <laughs> no, no, it's, uh, uh, Tim, that's a, uh, uh, a Jesse white. I, I, Jesse I got white. it. I got yeah. it. All right. I got it. All right. And, um, but you want to um, get the organ donation program uh, uh, up to speed and you want to decrease the wait times at uh, secretary of state offices. And I got to tell you, you normally don't make this personal, but I was with my mother who was getting a, an ID card because she can't drive anymore. And, you know, she's a senior, well, obviously she's a senior citizen and it was in Deerfield. And, uh, you know, we were in the senior line, but it's all a senior line there. And it was like two and a half hours. And, boy, you know, I love my mother, but I didn't want to spend two and a half hours with her at the secretary of state's office. So I'm, I'm lodging my complaint with you. OK, well, well, in advance. Well, well thank you for that. But that, that that does dovetail into some of the things I've been talking about. And, yes, we, we want to have more remote services, uh, advanced technology come in the 21st century. But to your point regarding your mother, I mean, there's still those individuals that are going to come into facility and are going to need extra special attention. Glad they, they moved, uh, the seniors moved the lines now. That's, that's great, it should be. Uh, but what we have to do is figure out how we reduce that foot traffic 
for some of these larger facilities that are causing those wait times where people sit outside or stand outside in the cold and, and uh, the heat. And that's a lot of the things I've talked about and how I can do that. Tim, I actually like those weights. <laughs> I think I think everybody I think that everybody who wants national government health care should have to spend three hours sure. waiting for a driver's sure. license. Sure, it's it, it's it, it, yeah, it'll, it'll it'll it's a good well, lesson. It'll educate you. You know, one fi- question here now: <laughs> If you were the Secretary of State, Secretary of State, and Donald Trump uh, said that he didn't want you to certify the election, uh, would you certify it, Mr. Brady? Yes. Oh, okay. That is my that is that would be my responsibility. However, don't confuse the Secretary of State's office, the State Board of Elections, because the ceremonial of uh, really process of cert or of certifying the election uh, is is really ceremonial for the Secretary of State. It's the State Board of Elections, and then it's all the election authorities all across the state of Illinois and all 102 counties that canvass and actually count the votes. Okay. Well, we wish you the best. You know, I mean, speaking speaking of the choir here, I'm going to vote for you. Tim's going to vote for you illegally. I mean, <laughs> Wait, Tim can't vote for you. <laughs> yeah, uh, there you go. <laughs> best of luck to you in your campaign, the rest of your campaign. We appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Hearing you say hello. Nice to be with Good you. Luck, Tim. Take take care. Bruce Wolf, Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap. This is just coming in right now. Uh, Daryl Brooks has been found guilty of first degree intentional homicide, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety. You know, this comes after allegations that he had driven an SUV through a crowd of people celebrating at a Waukesha Christmas parade. He killed six people and injured more than 60 others. And this has been a strange trial, not only because of the nature of, you know, what he stood accused of, just haven't found guilty of, uh, but because of behavior in the courtroom. In fact, even today, as these counts have been read out, someone in the courtroom yelled out saying that he should burn in hell. They used another expletive, had to be removed swiftly from the room. But over the course of these last 18 days of the trial, Daryl Brooks himself has been, you know, belligerent, angry, openly fighting with the judge at times. Bruce Wolf, Tim Slagle on the weekly ramp. Gee, if I hadn't seen that report, I would say I, I, like forgotten about this we should nobody knows the guy's name of course who did no. this it's that it, waukesha guy yeah right yeah it was only a Chris, christmas parade murder but uh, you know it was, it was the wrong kind of murderer <laughs> not the kind of thing that we w- want to dwell on at all it was, it was it was it was it was reversed you know if it had been a if it had been a trump supporter oh my goodness uh, um running into a kwanzaa parade yeah, yeah. i'm sure the media yeah. would have treated it a little differently yeah yeah, the um, the prosecutors later conceded that um, his this guy's bail was inappropriately low uh, for the he, he had been jailed. Uh, he had been released from jail in a domestic abuse case prior to committing the murder. So um, where he tried to run over his wife. Yeah, so it's it's not yeah. a so it's usually don't they take the weapon away in an attempted murder uh, right exactly if they had taken if we yeah, had exactly. red flag laws on suvs yeah. this would have never happened no. i think the new game of clue uh, is going to have uh, colonel mustard <laughs> in the conservatory with the suv uh yeah no it's um yeah it, it, it's good to be reminded of those things on occasion so um i'm glad we we have been uh, pivoting now to the spotlight spotlight uh worst transition ever well no i think that transition of that uh university of pennsylvania swimmer may have been <laughs> worse unless the, you shoot him in the right light and you don't see the five o'clock shadow after he's won the race uh but anyway uh i was reading uh in the uh the more the dispatch jonah goldberg's uh, publication i haven't read too many political articles but i'm reading like some of their artsy uh stories or sports stories uh and uh, this guy, and I forgot his name right now, he had a cure for a boring baseball. And I mean, he went into great detail, and I'm sure you're not even interested in. Well, you know, you're an old Tigers fan, right? You care about baseball, don't oh, you? Oh, yeah. 68 okay. was. Uh, was uh, oh, yeah. Denny McLean. You're in my childhood. Yeah. 31 absolutely. victories for Denny McLean because the mound was 20 feet tall back then. I mean, after <laughs> that year, they lowered the mound because Gibson had a 1.12 ERA. Uh, Denny McLean won 31 games. They lowered the mount, and Carl Yastrzemski led the league in hitting with a 301 average. Oh, yeah, I am a rain man for 1968 stats. But so now they're 
and and that that was a big problem because the pitchers were dominant. Well, now you've got the same problem. So they they're instituting changes uh, next year. They're reducing the amount of time between pitches. It's going to be only like twenty seconds uh, between pitches for the pitcher, and they will penalize the batters if um, if, if they scratch themselves three times. Uh, that, that's a penalty, <laughs> but twice is okay. Are they going to have a? Are they going to have a pitch timer? Yeah, they do have a pitch timer. There is a pitch timer, and uh, and the delay of game could go against the batter or against the pitcher. So it, that's interesting, uh, and that's where most of the delay comes from because uh, in the aggregate, uh, cumulatively, you've got all these all, uh, between pitches. Who wrote this story? Uh, anyway, that I'm looking at on the screen. So um, any. Um, but this guy uh, in the dispatch had another solution as well. He thought that they should move the mound back a little bit because the mound is too close to home plate. And, you know, there's a lot of evidence for that because the pitchers are so much bigger and stronger than they were. I mean, Denny McLean threw one time he threw, and I'm ashamed to say where I got this statistic, Keith Olbermann, uh, he, Denny, because he's, he's a baseball geek. He said that Denny McLean had once uh, pitched a game in which he'd thrown 249 pitches, 240. Now they're out of there. Yeah. You know, like hundred is great. That's, Five that's innings. That's like a, that's like a season for most. Pitchers totally. Nowadays. I mean, yeah, there are relief pitchers who don't throw 249 pitches in, in, in a season. So, um, but he suggested that th this guy suggested they move the mound back because it takes like, uh, like X number of milliseconds right now for the ball to reach home plate and the batters just can't react that quickly. If you move the mound back a little bit, they're going to be able to hit the ball. Now, what he didn't think of, because I think of things in a dimensional chess or a Rubik's cube that has 16 sides. And I'm always thinking of other angles. If you get more scoring in baseball, the games are going to be even longer. <laughs> Which, and that's the whole idea is to make them shorter. But it's not. Yeah, the but there's going to be action. I mean, that's there the will, idea. It's, oh, my God. Did you watch at all the Yankees uh, Astros series? It was so dull. All the Yankees, the Astros outfielders, fielders that didn't even need to be there. Uh, they, uh, there was. The, the Yankees struck out a zillion times and they barely hit the ball. Aaron judge who set the, you know, the world record for 62 homers in a season. Who did he hit these homers off of? I have no idea because he did nothing in, in, in the, in the series. So all um, I saw of that series was the fact that Ted Cruz showed up dressed in Astros wear. Uh, seriously. Yeah. I did not. I did not. In see New that. York. In New York. Was Ted Full Cruz actually asterisk. there? Yeah, was Ted Cruz that. actually there? Oh, yeah. okay. Right, good. Good for him. I he saw. Was, I think he was in New York to do the View. I think that's what he was in. New well, York that's. For. I saw a clip of Ted Cruz on the View, and he held his own. Of course, he's Ted Cruz. I mean, he can hold his own against Whoopi Goldberg, but uh, <laughs> oh, good for him. Good for him. So anyway, uh, yeah, that that's the solution to that. Um, well, Just you know, a, though, what, what I'm thinking, if you move that mound back further, all these uh, celebrity first pitches are going to be really but Fauci couldn't get it to the over home plate. <laughs> oh, it, well, the, most of the time when celebrities throw uh, a ceremony first pitch, they stand, you know, little league length anyway. I mean, have, have <laughs> they, you ever stood on a pitcher's from, mound? They shoot from the woman's tees. Have you ever, right, have you ever stood on a, a regular pitcher's mound? I mean, I, I got vertigo on it. It's uh, -huh. uh it's it, it's it's not that easy. The um, speaking of sports, uh, so the Bears are on Monday Night Football, and they won this game against the Patriots. It, it was an absolute surprise. And I'm telling you, the election, the GOP is tracking what the Bears did on uh, Monday Night Football. They took a lead. They took a nice, comfortable lead. Then they fell back. Looked like they were going to lose. And then they rallied and they swamped them. It was a tsunami. And that's what's happening with the GOP. Looked like it was going to be the red wave. Then the Dobbs decision comes out. Looks like it's going to be tough. Now it looks like it's going to be the red wave again. So I, I, I know a lot of Bears fans or Democrats. Well, too bad, because uh, that's how the Bears <laughs> game looked like. Now, they, I, do you ever watch the Manning cast? Of course not. So the ESPN has an alternative uh, sportscast. It's the Manning brothers. 
Peyton and Eli, and they had Barack Obama. I said, said it, I'm going to switch to them because hey, I've like I've enjoyed them. They're really funny and they've got a lot of expertise. But who's their first guest? It's a Barack Obama. So I switched off <laughs> because you know, I, I need to see Barack Obama. But and thank you to Jim Garrity of National Review for actually, actually watching this or getting this. He gets here's what Obama said. He said, don't pass up your opportunity to participate. He's urging uh, voters to come to the polls, because if you're unhappy with the way things are, the good news is the way our system is set up, you actually bring about some change. And and then he mentioned some of the issues, jobs, the economy. OK, he has to throw in climate change. But look at the issues, jobs in the economy. He didn't mention abortion and <laughs> and, um, and the economy is a loser. For the Democrats. So basically, as, as Garrity was 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 saying, it looks like Obama in his clever way, you know, in his way that makes it uh, gives Chris Math uh, Matthews a thrill up his leg. He was undercutting Biden, the schmo, uh, and, and saying, yeah, go out there and vote and don't vote for <laughs> the Democrats because <laughs> I'm not your leader anymore. It's that idiot. That's senescent uh, Joe I, Biden. I tried to warn you before yeah. the election, everybody. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, and, and uh, you know, uh, never, and, never underestimate his ability to something or other. Or, or is it overestimate? Over oh no, it's Obama underestimate. Okay. Obama uh, said, "Yeah, Obama said about Joe Biden, never underestimate his ability to screw things up." Oh yeah, yeah, no, no question about that. So. Um, all right, we have we have time for uh, one other thing, uh, and this I, I've got it right here, I believe. Oh, could you wrestle a grizzly bear? Did you think you could do that, Tim? Uh, it depends. <laughs> well, about six percent of Americans think they could beat a grizzly bear in hand to claw combat. I got this from the dispatch. But college wrestler Kendall Cummings tested the question earlier this month when he tackled a grizzly mauling his friend. Cummings didn't so much win as survive by playing dead. And both the young men are expected to make a full recovery. It reminds me of, remember that guy who tried to befriend, I believe it was a, a family of grizzly yeah, bears. Yeah, his name was Tim, too. Was oh, you remember Tim, him. Uh, he, he felt yeah, it personally. I, and he, I was going like, to say for, Tim Tebow, but that's not right. No, no. Uh, he, he, uh, he, and he, he carried it yeah, off. Yeah, he believed for, that. We lived with the Grizzlies. He wanted to be the Jane Goodall of, of the Grizzly yeah, world. Yeah, except Jane Goodall, I think, kept her distance, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> this guy was like, you know, sleeping with them and considered uh -huh. them like teddy bears. And they were for, uh, I don't know, maybe a few years or whatever. And then one day they got hungry and they ate him. So uh, that's what happened. Which one I don't guy. understand. I don't understand what, what playing dead. How does that stop a bear attack? It seems to me if the attack is due to their hunger. That well, maybe they weren't hungry. Like, I mean, you know what? Maybe the bears, maybe bears are dumb. OK, because Yogi, remember, was smarter than the average bear. Yogi would have uh, eaten him. <laughs> well, All yeah, right. On that note, our basket. election special. What a what an election special oh, it was, man. Bruce Wolf, am... Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap. And that's the weekly wrap on radio and television. Follow Bruce at Bruce Wolf Shy on Twitter and Tim at TimSlagle.com. The weekly wrap with Bruce Wolf, a CP Pods production. Copyright 2022.